Hi guys, it's Otto from Motorize It. And today we'll be looking at how to make your own electric roller blind. Um, we'll be looking at the, uh, the parts you need and um, how they all fit together. Um, in a separate video, we'll actually uh, go through the whole process of putting it together, so assembling it. But now let's, uh, let's start with, uh, with the individual pieces, uh, what they do and what you need them for. Now first of all, let's start with the motor. Um, what I have here is a, a Somfy Roll-Up 28 RTS motor. So it's a very, uh, very small motor, so it fits uh, the small tubes that you need for roll-up lines. Now what's special about the motor is first of all uh, the control. It's an RTS motor, which means it's a remote control. That's, uh, you see the antenna here. So the receiver is actually built in, so it's not a separate module. Now what it, that allows you to do is first of all control it via remote. Um, we have the well-known um, TELUS 4 RTS, um, which allows you to, to remotely control it. But there's more options. Uh, for example, a timer, so a clock that allows you to, uh, to automatically lower and raise your blinds, uh, which is a handy, uh, handy function. Um, you can also um, co um, match a sensor, so you can link a sensor to the motor um, that allows you, for example, to, to measure the intensity of the light. And when it becomes too bright, um, the sensor will automatically send a signal that will um, lower your, your blind. So that's a, that's a good function to have as well. Um, so there's a few ways to, uh, to uh, operate the system. Um, so it's either by remote or triggered or timed. Now, um, you, you also need, of course, some, uh, some power to the, uh, to the motor itself. Um, it's a 12 volt motor, so it's not actually directly connected to, uh, to mains. Um, there's a few ways uh, you can provide power to the motor. First of all, there's a, there's a tube which fits uh, 10 uh, rechargeable batteries. Um, and that allows you to, uh, to use the motor for, uh, for several months. Um, the exact uh, amount of time that you can use the motor depends, of course, on how many times you operate it per day. So if that's, uh, that's quite often per day, then, uh, of course, uh, it will last a little bit less than, um, than when you only use it once or twice per day. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a solution that, that works well uh, for a longer period of time. So you won't be recharging your batteries every, uh, every single week. And speaking of recharging, um, the tube, of course, uh, is placed somewhere where it's, uh, where it's out of sight. Clips are provided with the tube, so uh, you can easily hide it. Um, but you don't need to take the batteries out if you don't want to. Um, there's actually a charger that you can connect to the, to the tube, uh, which means you can leave everything in place. Um, and you don't, need to, um, you don't need to take the batteries out, so that's a lot less work when you need to recharge it. As I said, it's only uh, a few times per year that you need to do that, so it's, uh, it's not a big job. But if you, uh, if you want to um, um, not do that even, um, if you want to have it automatically charged, that's a, there's another option, which is this small solar panel. So you connect it just like you would connect a, um, a charger, so that there's still the tube in between as, uh, as, the, um, as a sort of battery uh, in between that provides uh, the power to the motor. Um, but the, uh, the solar panel actually makes sure that the batteries are recharged every time there's enough, uh, there's enough light. So that, uh, that helps you with uh, not even having to charge it uh, once every few months. Everything will automatically be, be recharged so you always have power uh, for, your, for your motor. Um, so those are the, uh, those are the options. Um, and what's next is, uh, is of course, you have, you have now the, uh, the operating uh, options, so the control systems, and you have the, uh, the power sources. But what you need as well is, uh, is a few other pieces. Um, to start off, uh, we, we need a tube. Um, you need a tube to, to fix your fabric onto. This is an aluminium tube, 38 millimeters in diameter, with um, a double-sided uh, adhesive strip. So it's, it's easy to, uh, to connect the fabric, you just peel this off and the fabric will, uh, will, will be fixed to it. And this is a piece of fabric. Um, you can either buy one yourself, we can provide one, um, or you can just take an old roller blind and take this fabric off. One thing to make sure is that you actually have, uh, have some sort of weight uh, as a lower bar. Um, that's because it makes it easier to, to roll the whole system down. You need a bit of gravity uh, to pull on this lower bar to make it roll down smoothly. Um, and also this helps you uh, keep a perfectly flat fabric. Um, if, if there's no weight in the, in the, in the lower bar, um, you can actually get waves in the fabric itself, which is, which is something you, you'd rather pre prevent. So that's the fabric side of it. So we have the tube, 
uh, and the fabric. But the motor, of course, needs to fit inside the tube. Um, and for that, you need, uh, you need two pieces, a wheel and a crown. Um, this is the motor as it comes standard to fit this tube, which is the one we provide, the 38 millimeters. You need to take this ring off. And you have this, um, these two pieces which slide onto it. And then the whole system can slide into the tube and make sure that the tube turns while the motor stays in position. So those are the two pieces on the motor side. <coughs> the motor then, of course, is uh, connected to a bracket, which is this steel bracket. There's a little sort of adapter part which is screwed onto the motor side and then this slides over the bracket. Um, as I said before, we, we will have a separate video where everything is, is discussed in detail um, and you can actually see how it's all put together. But once this is this has uh, been placed over it, you can actually cover the screw holes and have a nice side cap. So you have a nice clean look for the mounting plates. Now on the other side, of course, you need something to um, to hold up the tube as well, which is this part, this goes into the tube and that slides over this part here, there's a pin. Um, you can actually make the tube a little bit smaller so it's easier to fit in and you have some, some room to play with here. So it doesn't need to be exactly up to here, it can be a bit shorter, you have some space here to, to play with and it makes it sometimes easier to, uh, to place the tube inside the brackets. Now on this side, of course, you need the steel bracket as well. This slides over it as well once this piece has been fitted to it. You can see the complete assembly here. And again, you have the covers, which make sure you have a nice and clean look for the whole side bracket. So that's basically it. Uh, as, as a quick overview of all the uh, all the ways you can um, you can operate your electric oil blind uh, and the pieces you need. Uh, to make one yourself. Now, if you have any questions, you need specific parts, um, or would like to know something about the power supplies or the uh, other remote controls, let me know. The email address is info at motorize.it. Thank you, and see you next time.